Everybody, welcome back. This is 5J1113 Diesel Engine Assembly Episode 5. We got rods and pistons on the bench yet. In the last episode, we got all the old stuck rings pulled off. This episode, I'm going to have to disassemble these, thoroughly clean everything, and then we're going to start checking ring gap and hopefully get these assembled and ready to go back in the engine. So, quick rundown of the plan here. Pretty much everything here is going to be reused because these pistons are in good shape. You can't find new ones anyway, so that's a good thing. These rod bearings, if you remember back to the disassembly process of 1113's old engine, I checked all these running clearances and everything was still at brand new spec. These are in good shape, so they're getting used over again, which also is a good thing because we can't find new rod bearings anyhow, no longer available. Same as the old crankshaft, that's getting reused, just going to get cleaned up. So that means since these components have already been run uh, in the assembled manner in which they are right now, after I take these apart, I need to put them back together oriented exactly the same as everything is as you see it here. That means bearing shells get put back in exactly how they came out. You don't swap a rod shell to a cap shell. You don't even go and flip it 180. Everything has to be put back exactly as it is now. Same with piston pins, same with orientation of piston to connecting rod. Which brings me to something else I just noticed. You'll note that the top of the piston crown has this little V-notch in it, same style V-mark that we made note of in the block deck, which is down there. You can't see it right now because it's upside down, but basically that indicates camshaft side of the engine. So when you put the piston in the cylinder, you align this V-notch to be in register with the V-notch that's in the top of the block. That makes sure that your fire crater is in the right spot beneath the pre-combustion chamber and also that your valve reliefs are in the correct area. Nothing's going to contact that way. Um, so, V-notch is on this side, we look down and the rod number stampings are also on the same side. You see that one and one right there? They're actually supposed to be over here. So, as we determined in the last video, at some point in 1113's previous life, her engine was rebuilt because she's got the updated pistons in. Someone also put the rods on backwards, which really doesn't matter. These are symmetrical rods and they don't care. It doesn't make any difference function-wise at all if they're put on backwards. But as a convenience factor, you would want to have your number identification stampings on this side of the engine over here so that you can look in through these side inspection panels and see which number it is. Now, that's just a convenience thing. Right now, the way the rods are on the pistons, the stamping numbers are going to be over here on camshaft side, so you won't be able to see them through there. But that's just kind of a convenience item anyway, and I know that on these engines, they number one, two, three, four from front to back. So do I really need to have those rods flipped around? No. So, like I said a minute ago, since everything has already been run in to a certain extent in the manner in which it's assembled right now, that's how it's going to stay. So to disassemble the pistons, we'll get it in the vise again using the soft jaws. And just clamp down on the rod. We'll get the circlips out from each side of the pin. Next I'll use this old socket and a hammer. We'll drift the pin out the other side. Socket pulled back out of there. Lift the piston off. Just going to slide that pin back in there to keep it oriented properly. And repeat the process for the other three. Now that all the pistons are off the rods, it's going to be a whole lot of really boring cleaning. Um, probably not going to show most of that, but basically we've got rust, we've got carbon, we've got all the old... Uh, uh, debris and dirt that's underneath the rings from this thing having been stuck. We'll clean the pistons outside, inside. We'll clean the rods really well. We'll get the shells out, clean the backsides of everything, make sure that the oil feed passage up to the pin bushing is clear and clean. Basically guys, it's probably going to take me the rest of the day just to get these things cleaned up. So I'm going to get busy. Camera off. Okay, I'm back. It's actually been three days that I've been cleaning on these uh, pistons and rods. Uh, granted, I haven't had a lot of time to be out here in the shop, but I was able to get them all looking uh, looking pretty nice, really. Uh, cleaned up well, especially the rods. I liked everything that I saw in there. Made sure all the uh, bolts and cap nuts were in good condition. All the ma mating surfaces were nice and true and flush and square. Um, I got the spec book sitting right here. I want to tell you what I found with the piston pins. So we'll look at the spec here. Uh, piston pins, clearance and rod bushing. 
New spec is one one thousandths to eighteen ten thousandths. So basically one thousandths to one point eight thousandths. Okay, that's brand new. Maximum permissible clearance in rod and piston are both six thousandths of an inch. And we're much, much better than that. Um, everything here for piston pins basically mic'd out to be about a two thousandths running clearance inside the rod bushing. No appreciable wear to be found on the pins at all. And I'm running about a one and a half to two thousandths clearance inside the pistons as well. Just push this in and show you. That is, that is a very nice fit. No play. Even kind of have to work them out if you cock them at all and get them out of square. They don't want to move, so that tells me there is not excessive clearance going on in there at all. Um, number one piston pin looked excellent. However, number two has a lot of um, pitting on it. There was uh, quite a lot of moisture that had uh, come to rest, kind of uh, condensed up inside this uh, piston skirt. And we've got some pretty good marks in there. I don't like that at all. Running clearances, again, are excellent in both pin bushing and piston, but I don't like the corrosion on that one. And number three also has some, some pretty good water marks in it. You can feel them with your fingernail from where it had sat with moisture inside the bushing. The bushing, of course, is fine because that bronze does not rust, but metal does. So number four was another one that cleaned up and actually looked really, really good. But bright side of the story, I did some uh, research, I made some phone calls, and we'll just say I'm expecting another package here in the next couple days. And uh, there might be a few other surprises in that as well, but I guess we'll, we'll get to that when the time comes. Transitioning to the next phase now, we are gapping the new piston rings. As you can see, I've done all the compression rings and the first oil control ring for each piston already. I just have the final four oil control rings left. Um, I'll show you what my process has been for those. It's kind of tedious, so I'm not going to bore you too badly, but uh, I've been just making note of everything in here. Our uh, ring end gap clearances. Spec on the top ring is 10 to 15 thousandths end gap. And I've been running 15 consistently on all four of the new top rings, so we're just fine there. New spec on the second and third oil controls is 10 to 20 thousandths. And you can see we've been 13 to 14 thousandths all through there. Again, just fine. Uh, end gap on the new oil control spec is 13 to 21 thousandths. I've been running 19 on the first four. We'll get these other four placed in. I expect that they're going to be very similar. Now I'll show you the procedure I use for checking these rings. So we have the oil control ring right here. I will carefully start it sideways into the cylinder. Let the gap at the top close somewhat. Also carefully pivot it around, kind of square it up a little bit. And to get the most accurate measurement on the gap, I need it absolutely square in that cylinder. So I'll take the skirt of the piston, push down on that ring, until I can feel that I'm pressing down on the entire uh, circumference of the ring. If these were flat top pistons, I could use the top, but because of these valve reliefs and stuff, uh, they're not flat, but the skirt does, so you get the idea. And to check the gap now, I'll take the feeler gauge. We have the 19 thousandths thick blade out here, because that's what the other rings measured. We'll stick that in the gap. Sure enough, it's a good fit. So we'll check it with the 20 thousandths blade just to see and the 20 is a no-go. So, I like how that 19 fits. 19 thousandths gap on that ring as well. Repeat the process for the other three holes. And then just remove the ring, carefully pivot it back up so it's sideways in the bore. Ease it out, let it expand slowly, and remove. Now that I know the end gaps are all within spec, the next step is to take the rings and install them on the pistons and then check what the side clearance of the rings are in the grooves. Very easy, you assemble the rings to the pistons. Using feeler gauge blades, go between the ring and the groove, determine what your side clearance in the grooves are. You'll notice number one piston has the rings on it. Two and three do not, number four does. Why is that? Well, I had done some recording, found problems with two and three, and had to scrap that earlier footage and we are where we are now. So anyway, 
I'll show you what some of my measurements were, and I'll try and explain what the problem is that I found. So we have our spec book, piston ring, side clearance, and groove. Top compression ring, three to four thousandths new, and maximum permissible clearance on any new ring is ten thousandths of an inch. So three to four would be new. Uh, number one, I had a four thousand side clearance. Very good. Number four, three to five side clearance. Not going to worry about that at all. Two and three, however, were out of spec. Three, I had 10 to 15,000 side clearance on that top ring. And number two was the worst at 14 to 25. That is a definite no-go. And it just, I was shocked that for some reason on pistons two and three, that this top ring land was so hammered out. And these GoPros are not the best for focusing in. But... Let's see if I can catch some of it now. You're not going to pick it up very well. But anyway, here we go. That's where we got a horrendous step on the bottom of this uh, top ring groove right here. And I can't believe just how war that is, being that it is a steel insert. Um, I would expect that on an all-aluminum piston. And I don't know why 2 and 3 were so hammered out and 1 and 4 were still good. Um, you know, now that I see... All the scoring that's above that top ring land, which on an aluminum piston, uh, it's it's typical because you get what's called carbon scuffing when the piston comes up and stops at top dead center and then goes back down where that upper ring stops moving and goes back down. Everything above that can fill with carbon and it'll build carbon between the cylinder wall and the piston and you'll get that resulting scuffing. That's not a big deal, but with the excessive amounts of that that there are all the way around these pistons, it's kind of giving me the impression that maybe this uh, maybe old 1113 ran for a while without a good air filter on it, or maybe no air filter, air leaks, like it was ingesting grit and dirt. I don't know. I don't know the history on this, but for some reason, two and three have top ring lands that are just hammered out, and it's a shame because the rest of the piston is good. All four of these pistons are good, and every ring groove below the top was still well within spec. Um, Second and third rings, one and a half to two and a half thousandths. I was one and a half on all of them, except for number two, I was running two thousandths. Not bad, still within brand new spec. Oil control rings, one and a half to three and a half. I was running one and a half on all of them. So basically everything below that top ring on two and three is still good. The rest of the piston's good too, but I just do not like excessive clearances like that on a top ring on a compression ignition engine. That is not good at all. So what do we do? Let's see if we can find some more pistons. I'm gonna have to stumble around in the dark. Okay. Give you guys a rundown of what's happening here.